This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hi, I'm Jason Klein from Fix It 101. If you ever thought about changing the doorknob or fixing a leaky faucet, some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. From MPB Think Radio, you are tuned to Deep South Dining, the show all about the culture of Southern flavor, the folks that love to stir the pop in the pot, and those of you who share. Good morning, Malcolm White with Carol Palmer. We will be your host this morning. You know, with each change of the calendar, there is a chance for a fresh start and new chapters in your life in and out of your kitchen. To start the year off right, we will talk about creating new good kitchen habits, how to make a meal prep easier, and what food trends uh, are giving us a try in 2023. As always, we'd love to hear from you and what's going on in your kitchen. Good morning. It's 2023. <laughs> it was Java. Elvis's birthday <laughs> yesterday. Elvis's birthday was yesterday. Oh, my gosh. At, no which is I... also the birthday of Howl and Mouse. January, Happy birthday, Helen Mouse. January the 8th. Elvis, and here I thought Java was just getting us revved up. Thank you very year. much. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you got to represent us a Tupelo guy. There it's you Tupelo go. Tupelo guy. Yeah. Big weekend. Big weekend. Well, I'm revved up now well, that I heard that. Happy New Year, Carol. Happy New Year, we've, Mal. We've not seen each other since the calendar flipped. We have not, but I have eaten pound cake made ah, in your house. Ah, pound cake. In many different ways. Good. I'm so glad. Thank you. Kara makes a mean pound cake. She does indeed. She does indeed. And and I thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. Well, um, as I said, this is the start of a new year. There are food trends. There are um, challenges um, ahead. There are many uh, topics to cover, one of which is... Um, that Jackson uh, continues to struggle uh, with the water issues. So it was a very tough uh, holiday period for Jackson restaurateurs uh, dealing with the uh, boil water crisis. Um, so uh, we are glad that that has finally ended. And it's time to jump back in it, to it the water, time. so to speak. Right. It's time to get out there and, and support uh, our restaurants. And, um, you know, I know that we both want to wish. Um, all good things for our friend Marty Clapton, who mm, yeah. closed Barrel House on Saturday. It was just one water crisis too many. But I don't know about you, but I love the way uh, he did that. He announced it a few days earlier, and it gave, you know, his patrons and people who just really, you know, love that place a, ch- a little bit of chance to absorb it, but also. T- also, to celebrate it and go by the restaurant and say a fitting goodbye. Yeah. And, you know, we appreciate what they did in Fondren and, you know, hate that it didn't work out. Yeah. Well, it's it's a tough business, and it's um, a really tough business uh, when you're dealing with issues like not being able to use the water uh, that comes out of the tap. But we, and all those people in Fondren, like they're on this little hill, and it's some right. of the oldest pipes, you know, in the city. And even on a good day, the water pressure is not, it's not, great. It's not, it's not great up there. So anyway, good luck to all of the uh, Jackson-based restaurants who are struggling, and uh, hopefully this will be the last of the boiled water for a while, and uh, everyone can get back to the business of being a business. So, uh, you know, uh, I I had uh, lunch at the Mayflower last week, and and they I was there to listen to all of what they're going through. Of course, you know my association with Hallam Owls, if I don't own it anymore, I'm down there most days. But you're Mal. I am. I'm still Mal. Uh, but they are. You know, they have had to struggle with the bottled water, canned drinks, buying ice, just the whole. You know, I went through it running Hallam Mouse, This whole notion of trying to survive without, uh, you know, good water coming through the taps. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, profits are pretty slim, you know, on, on restaurants. Four percent when is, everything is, is working, working well. well. Right. So anyway. But anyway, it sounds like there's a plan with the water. Things are yes. getting better. We've turned a corner. It seems that way. Uh, there are people in place. There's lots of funding in place. So we hope for the best. All right. Uh, so um, one of the things I saw 
while reading throughout the holidays was this thing about soups. I sent it to you about yes. ways to jazz up your soups. You know, I'm a big soup eater. Yeah. And it's and it's about adding toppings. And talk you know. to us about that. Malcolm. Well, you know, on a, a bowl, you can make a pot of soup, put it in the refrigerator, and when you pull it back out. If you want to give it a little bit of zing, you might add a little bit of cheese to the top or some chopped herbs or a little splash of some quality olive oil, like the olive oil that, that we, we all got from, got from Elaine, Elaine Trigiani, Trigiani, who's yeah. coming on the show shortly. Is that right, Java? In February. In February. Yeah. So you can splash it with a little olive oil. A little yogurt. A little non-fat yogurt. fat yogurt. A little sour cream. All of the above. Just if you have a soup, a big pot of soup, and um, you want to give it a little little nudge every time you warm it up, <laughs> add a fun topping. It's like yeah. a party hat. <laughs> how about how about some chopped bacon or some chives Ooh, or a little bit bacon. of parsley mm-hmm. or some rosemary? Well, that kind of goes a little bit to what um, we're talking about with 2023, elevated comfort food. So that's like, like uh, that elevating. Um, I learned that with the culinary uh, adventure I've been on, but elevating, you know, just things that you eat every day to another level. I why like don't, it. Why don't you share your culinary adventure there, Java? Yeah, Java, I mean, we need a drum roll here because <laughs> you have, have been on an amazing culinary adventure, and I would just like to say as part of the Deep South Dining Team, to watch you grow in a culinary way over these years has been a joy, but you have now reached the pinnacle. Yeah, I've been, uh, uh, and I have to give all praises to my to my wife because you know, great things come when a husband listens to his wife. Um, but yeah, I, we went to a trip on D, to Washington D.C. for our anniversary, and she picked out some great restaurants for us to eat at, including a Michelin star restaurant um, called the Dabney. Mm. And it was a true culinary experience. And if you ever get the opportunity to eat at one of these restaurants where the menu is set, you know, there was no, I want this and take this off. No, no. They is brought it. it Prefix. Prefix. Yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, there are not many Michelin starred restaurants in the United States. So the fact, you know, that, that you have done, you were in a very rarefied now that I didn't know. I yeah, know. <laughs> it's it, the, and that that is such, but it does literally cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, it, to do to do this. <laughs> however, Java was hoping you wouldn't bring up that part well, of it. Well, I no, just say I it is an experience it's, that you. It's like going on a vacation. With, you have to pay. You you do have to pay. There is a a a cost. It's not your local, you know. Uh, meet and three uh, spot, <laughs> but it does. And I, I was ex- trying to explain it to someone about what we ate and how it was a different experience than just going out to eat on a regular night. Um, it showed me how you can cook like that, like you can have those type of flavors on those type of um, ingredients that are something that I would normally choose. I mean, I'm not eating beluga caviar. Right. Wrapped in this concoction or these, um, I mean, it was so many. I'm not eating a duck chicken wing. Like I don't know. Wow, yeah. it, was, it was a it was a lot. Well, good. well the pictures you sent uh, really were were just were just fabulous, and I was so pleased for you to have that experience. It, it's just something that you know not many people get to do, or if you do it once, you don't do it. Do it very often. So. I mean, this restaurant had me eating beets. Oh, I love beets. You I'm, don't love beets? No, sir. Now, but now you do. <laughs> but it was also just the flavors in the, I don't know, it's, it's something to, I, I so wish I could explain it. So were the plates all small, or small? Was it a lot of different courses? It was. It was about seven courses, uh, uh, what they call a, t- a tasting menu. But unlike we thought we were going to have to go get something to eat afterwards, we did not have to. It was very filling, and it was delicious, every bite. And again, the name of the restaurant? <laughs> it's called The Dabney. The Dabney in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And so it was your anniversary trip. Yeah. And then we went to um, a place called Old Ebbett Grill. Um, mm-hmm. that's, which, a, that's a standard. Yeah, the oldest um, bar and grill in Washington, D.C., a stone's throw away from the White House. And um, I had steak frites. 
Yeah. Which yes. which I did not know anything about except for when we went to Flora. Yeah, I was going to say we had it when we were uh, in Flora, which our show last week was was about the Flora. Experience. Yeah, I repeat. Well, we we played the repeat for Flora um, um, episode, but I wouldn't have known about Steak Freed if it wouldn't have been for Chef Dave and uh, you know. And the, everybody in Florida, and and the just, Florida butcher. Uh, you know, a classic French dish in you know most of Mississippi, we would say steak and French fries. Correct. Yeah, steak free, and I was able to pronounce it correctly. I, you know, it's just hey, it's all, it's all about good. from deep south dining. I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey. <laughs> well, I didn't get to go to D.C., but we did go down and spend the night over the holidays uh, in New Orleans. It's a, a good, close culture center for us, and uh, I went to one of my all time favorite. Places for breakfast, Carol, the old croissant d'or, which is a little French, traditional French. Uh, a little patisserie? A little patisserie uh, in the French Quarter. Been there quite a while. Uh, it's at 617 Ursulines Avenue in New Orleans in the French Quarter. It has pretty peculiar hours. You can tell they're really dedicated to the early morning diner. They're open from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Monday through Friday, and then 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, on Saturday and Sunday, and closed on Tuesday. Who knew? Yeah. So again, uh, the croissant d'or, great pastries, great breakfast. We went for a long walk and ended up there and had a wonderful meal. I was glad to see the place still open. Some of the places I went looking for were closed. A you lot. mean closed? Yeah, for like good out of business or and gone. For the, that, it just yeah. just so sad. But yeah, yes, tough time. Speaking of strange hours, I had a wonderful experience with the Sunflower Oven Bakery, and those guys were on our show. Uh, I guess the week, two weeks before Christmas, and I ordered a, a couple of their quiches. They're very good. Oh my gosh! I mean, yes. first of all, they're huge and they're deep. Yes. And they are just the tastiest quiches I've ever quiched upon. <laughs> you quicher. They also it. make really great sourdough bread. I oh, got sourdough bread. I got rolls. I got the chocolate babka. Those, but boy, how about the little cookies? Chocolate cookies. They are so good. I gave John, my husband, a jar of mustard for Christmas from there. Beautiful. It's their biggest deal. I it mean, is. They make a homemade. Deal. That's right. They make a it's homemade a deal, mustard. But, and you know, it's I had fantastic. a chance to visit the space. In fact, I loved it so much that I was over eager to go back. And I called last week, in fact, last Monday to see if they were open to take my friend Donna to lunch. And they are actually not opening until I believe it's today. So well, they they took a well deserved rest. But Malcolm, how about that quiche? It's fantastic. There's also uh, a couple of new places in the uh, Bellhaven Town Center. One just opened, and another coming. Beans and Bananas is a little shop that sells a, a variety of food items as well as children's toys and gifts. It's a very fun little shop. It's in the old Baptist Laundry where the uh, Fertile Ground Brewery is, called Beans and Bananas, and they have a fabulous uh, produce assortment so ah. people who live in the Bellhaven area can get fresh produce. And they also have some frozen and uh, dry food items. And right next door to them, Polito's, the Italian restaurant. Yeah, the it, Chuck uh, Lindsay, Chaz Lindsay. Chaz, mm -hmm. Yeah. They're opening in two weeks, I believe. And so... Uh, you know that some places are closing, some places are opening, and uh, you know, and and the beat goes on. There was also a pop up there over the weekend, and there's a great little food truck uh, pizza operation called Poppy Pie, Poppy P O P P Y, Poppy's Pies, uh, and they do these Neapolitan pizzas uh, in a in a food truck. They were fantastic. That's what we had for lunch on Saturday. We just walked around uh, to the town center and, and got pizzas and had them sitting out on our front yard because it was such a beautiful day over the weekend. Sounds like y'all are having fun. Well, I've been out in Edwards cooking. We're, you know, not close to anything restaurant-wise. 
um, you know, whatever. So your kitchen. <laughs> My kitchen <laughs> did a lot of cooking. Uh-huh. But I kind of got off on this whole thing of citrus salads. Yeah. You know, it's it's winter, and I don't know about you, but we receive fruit as Christmas gifts, some great oranges mm-hmm. and grapefruits. And I, I kind of rediscovered that this year, how, how good citrus is in the winter in so many different um you know concoctions mm-hmm. but I, f- I probably made five or six different kind of uh citrus salads everything from the that moroccan orange salad i mentioned before right. christmas from craig claiborne that had like you know, even little touches of cayenne mm-hmm. and paprika in it uh, just you know to to ones with honey dressing but the combination of that tart acidic perfect fruit and yeah. then sweet, like with honey, or either spice, like with pepper. It just, you know, accompanies so many great winter dishes. I, I agree. I love a citrus salad. Also, I really like fruit in my salad. I love apples yep. in my salads. Yep. Uh, I don't put bananas in there. But, is uh, apricot a uh, citrus? Because today is apricot day. It is apricot day. I wouldn't I say, I it's, wouldn't a say it's a citrus, but you could be onto something, Java. Who okay. knows? But who, we can I mean, reclassify it just because could. that's what we feel like doing, but I don't think so. Okay. Leave it to Java to know when apricot day is. <laughs> Carol, what's been happening on cooking and coping during the holidays? I wasn't dialed in very much. I was preoccupied uh, with guests over the holidays. So yes, they were very small <laughs> Very guests. small children. <laughs> I saw, uh, yeah, I saw pictures. <laughs> cooking and coping has it just really just been, there's been so much creativity over the holidays, and it, it's wonderful. I think, you know, we have like 56 or 5,700 people on the site, and then we have a core who post on the site. The rest, of, we're all just looking at what these, you know, our, our amazing friends do. You know, everything from a pimento cheese sandwich, onto these, you know, beautiful cakes and meals and soups and stews and uh, just a lot of creativity. A lot of stuff around New Year's to do with beans and greens. And right. Yeah, it was great. So we want to remind our listeners that we have a Facebook page called Cooking and Coping, and one can join in the conversation. It's an ongoing conversation about food and fellowship and friends and family. Love to have your input. Go on and Google. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, Java, tell our listeners where they can find us on podcast and rebroadcast and all of the ways in which they can enjoy Deep South Dining if they miss us on Monday morning. Well, yeah, if you miss us on Monday morning, the show rebroadcasts every Sunday morning at um, 9 a.m. Also, you can subscribe to the podcast using any podcasting app or um, the download the MPB public media app or visit our website, mpbonline.org. You can always get to us. We've got our friend Sue calling in from Beaumont. I think Sue likes to talk about soup. I believe that's what I see up there. Hey, Sue, what's going on? Well, no, <clears throat> excuse me, not soup exactly. I have a couple of little foodie questions I'd like to ask you, though. Uh, I'm watching something on television about the the establishment of different restaurants and things that went out of business over the years. And whatever happened, because they never did say exactly what happened to the uh, automats in New York. Because I thought that was such a cool idea. If what happened to them, why don't we still have automats? Well, I don't know the answer. The automats were like the first fast food restaurants, and um, I, I know New York. You know, New York had the very famous automat, and they were like a vending machine. I mean, it was supposed to be the way of the future. Mm-hmm. You would walk up to um, to the machine and put in your money, and it was. I mean, it was kind of a space age. Yeah. Was it a thing. warm meal, or was it just something you could mi- microwave? Or uh, how- it was. It was pre. It was pre microwave. Okay. And um, I'm I'm looking. I just looked up, looked up real 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 quick that is New York's population began to decline in the 50s. So th- so did the automats pros- prospects. Hmm. They struggled in what was no longer a five and dime world. The coin op- operated machines were no, you know, no longer efficient. So, like or a practical. vending machine. It, yeah. was, it was, yeah, but they would have like a big. The automat had 
it was like a huge room, like a restaurant with just a wall of these metal vending oh, machines. like a food court, vending food court. Yeah, back in the 50s. <clears throat> wow. Or does that, does that sound right, 50s. Sue? Yeah, that sounds right. And, and you, you get soup, dessert, well, something to drink and everything. You just put your money in, open the little door, and pour out your food. Wow, cool. Yeah, but it was, um, a, you know, a new method of eating. And, uh, yeah, Times Square was the one that I think that, you know, everybody here probably has in the, in their mind. But they were kind of come and gone mm-hmm. before we came on the right. scene, Mel. Oh, well. We were barely born. Now, we were barely born barely when they were born. gone. But speaking of food trends, when we come back, Carol, you mm-hmm. sent me a list of the what's hey, hot. Y'all, can I ask y'all another quick question that's been bugging me? Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Because you, you, you can send somebody to the store to get, like, for a bunch, like if, you, if you're cooking and you need celery, you can't say, uh, go get me a bunch of celery or a head of celery, get a head of cabbage or a head of lettuce. But how do you specify, like, for a, a bunch of, is it a bunch of green onions? Or like, what about celery and things like that? Do they have any uh, common denominator name? You oh, know, okay. That, I got you. you a know, stalk? How about stalk of celery? I think a celery is a bunch. A bunch. Of celery. Okay. A head of cabbage. Head of cabbage. I know that, y'all. Head of lettuce. A gaggle mm-hmm. of geese. Right. <laughs> a gaggle of geese. You know, I tell you what, uh, there, there is, there's a great book of, about, uh, you know, categories like that called the... Um, Something uh, I don't know. I have to think about it. But but it it addresses vegetables and people and all sorts of things. It's called the uh, I don't know, but I'll come up with it. But we got. But Sue, thanks a lot um, for that. We'll ponder uh, these uh, these food titles for different types of food groups and what they are referred to uh, as. As I said, Carol, we're going to talk about these 2023 food trends. What's hot? What's not? And uh, take a look at that list and uh, continue to visit with our callers. We've got a couple of callers backed up here. We're looking forward to your questions and your conversations. It's 2023, y'all, and we're glad everyone is uh, into the new year. And uh, just got a text from our buddy Chico Harris who said, The New York automats have long serenaded me from afar. Uh A big fan of the... The Automats, which Sue from Beaumont brought our attention to. And, Carol, thank you for that quick research and response. Uh, I was talking, uh, Sue was asking about what do you call certain groups of foods, like celery, a bunch of celery, a head of lettuce. Head of lettuce. And, and there is a fabulous book called The Exaltation of Larks, which is a, a book dedicated to the history of naming groups of animals and things and a sort of crack at new sort of hilarious uh, names for groupings of people. Uh, Like a flutter of butterflies is one that I came up with. Just, you know, thinking of what would you call a a bunch of bottled water? A palette of poly poly (laughs) something. Yeah. Anyway, (laughs) thanks to Sue for getting us... Uh, down that Good avenue. thinking, Malcolm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ex- the, the exaltation exalt- of larks. Right, and Remember and in that. this book, he says that that is his definition. Definition of, of larks, larks would be an ex, like a pride of lions. Exactly, you're on it now. So anyway, yeah. okay. Great, great side uh, conversation there. All right, we're going back to the phones. We've got Fletch calling from Flowood. Hello, Fletch. What's happening? Good morning. Well, uh, question, a couple comments. Uh, your, your question just now on what's a pallet of water, that would be uh, a welcome sight in Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> um, Correcto, change of <laughs> uh, and, and I was not familiar with the automat as a, like a retail establishment, but that sounded what, like our cafeteria was uh, in high school. We didn't have a cafeteria per se. We just had these mm-hmm. vending machines. Yeah. Some were refrigerated. You may have a free fab salad or, or sandwiches made and wrapped. Uh, or you had a heated vending machine that may have what we call soybean burgers or barbecue sandwich, or it was a can of soup uh, with a pull top. Oh, uh, yeah, and you would put them in a little machine, like a micro, of some kind of a little zapping machine. Um, well, no, the, the whole, the whole it, with ours in the 70s, 
our, the entire vending machine was either heated or cooled. Wow! So you didn't have to you didn't have to reheat anything. Um, wow! It was it was at edible temperature when you got it. Um, now that being said, I took a sack sack lunch most every day, but that was the option if you didn't uh, bring your lunch. We didn't have a cafeteria line. You had uh, a family uh, that lived down the street from us would get up every morning about three and make this food fresh every day, and they supplied uh, Indian Hill Academy and a couple of uh, um, factories uh, mm. like that. that wow. That's what they did, and that's how they did it. But huge, big, circular. The, the vending machines were square, but inside it was circular, like a pie piece. You'd slide the door and pull that pull that slot out, and then it would, you know, mechanically rotate. Well, the, the cool next, the thing next about what you're saying, which I've never heard, is that a family did the food. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking of the, you know, produce industrial. Yeah. You thought it was Keebler's that, Elves. Well, and you you would get the little, um, like, barbecue sandwich came in a little, it was, you know, sealed, and yeah. you would pop it in some little kind of thing. And But you're talking about homemade yeah. food. That is cool. This was an Indianola, Fletch? This was an Indianola, uh, and the Webb family got up every morning and uh, uh, and made that stuff fresh. Very cool. Um, and I don't know if... Uh, um, um, if either one of y'all would know Janet Webb, of uh, course indeed, we, we know, do. Janet. We know Webb. Janet. So that's so that's Janet's family. That was her mom and dad. They were in the food um, business a long time ago. Absolutely. Yes. Wow, that's a yes, cool tidbit. Thank you so much for. Thanks for so, listening. Um, and thanks for sharing that. Go ahead. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I was intrigued by your breakfast spot. I'll be in New Orleans next week, but I'll be there for breakfast on a Tuesday morning. It sounds like your place is closed. It oddly closed on Tuesdays. Um, Any other that. options uh, actually closer maybe to the warehouse district for breakfast? Well, that's where I was striking out. I, 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 three of the old breakfast places that I remembered when I lived there in the mid-70s and had an apartment there in the mid-80s were gone. So I tell you, in this day and age, you almost have to check around. But um, if anybody has recommendations for a breakfast spot, uh, did you say in the warehouse district on Chapatulas? Uh Well, a little, little bit away, further away from the river, but, but that would be close yeah. enough. You know, the Camellia Grill is still happening. That's a great place for an omelet and a breakfast up, uh, you know, at River Bend. Have you ever been to Camellia Grill? It's on Chop? Well, it's on um, at the end of St. Charles where the where the road turns uh, at the river bend. Okay. Um, Okay. It's a tr- it's a very historic place, and it's right on. I can't think uh, can't think of the name of that street, but it's where I'll figure it out. Camellia, ca- the mm-hmm. Camellia Grill. Well, I mean, you can always go stand in line at Mother's. Tom Ramsey, yeah. Well, oh, I Tom Ramsey will know for you. sure. I talked to Tom Ramsey right. last week. He's doing great. Well, thanks again. We appreciate you, and uh, appreciate everybody who listens and takes the time to call in or shoot us an email now we got mike uh on the line from hernando hello mike what's happening hey you guys i want to take you nostalgically back i'm 77 years old but i well as little we you're barely enough to, old enough <laughs> yeah barely old enough to eat uh but there's a memory that i want to take your minds back to and hopefully trigger you to do a show on uh back in those days we left memphis in 54 and i grew up in utah but there was a restaurant in Memphis downtown called Britlings. It was well known, a cafeteria. You walked in, everything was white, trimmed in black, and everything was green, uh, tablecloths, everything. But you took your tray, walked down the metal, pushed it down the little metal bars, and you ch- chose your food. That's not the point. The thing was, to this day, in my head, I can still smell Britlings. It smelled magnificent. And everybody that you talk to around here that's old as I am all goes, oh, Lord, yeah, we loved Britlings. Hmm. But there's a, there's a joy to the smell of food in some food establishments that has signature to their name. And Britlings was that way. And I don't know of any places around here in northern Mississippi that you can go to that still trigger that, oh, that wonderful homey feel just from the smell. Because some places do smell like grandma's kitchen. Yeah. And I was wondering if you guys have any places around this state that you know where the joy of going there is immediately all. As soon as you walk in, you're like, oh, wow, I'm so glad we're here. That's terrific. And uh, thank you for suggesting and that. Food you know, for and food and memory and smell. <clears throat> yeah, you know, uh, Coleman's Barbecue up there. 
uh, triggers that for me because we had a Coleman's barbecue in Boonville, uh, and it was a Memphis uh, group, and they had had you know branched out and had I think there's one Coleman's on the planet left, and I think it's in Cenotopia or Hernando or somewhere up there. Do you know about it? Fernando is gone. They put a bank there now, and we all miss it. Boy, we miss it. But you know, it was the classic. It was like a greasy spoon. Everybody went and met, but that was one. Also, you walked in, and the smell was incredible. Right. But uh, Whitling's was that way. It was not a barbecue smell. It was just like a conglomeration sure. of all the wonderful aromas that come from a, a well-stocked kitchen, a well-used kitchen. And, and what I, I miss that. What I recall about <clears throat> cafeterias, and we grew up eating in a cafeteria because we lived on a community college campus, but we would go to New Orleans when I was a kid and eat at Morrison's Cafeteria. They were oh fabulous cafeterias, well run. And what I remember as a smell was the smell of fresh bread being baked, like yeast yes. rolls. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Gravy Boy, this... and gr- the smell of gravies and uh, oils. You know, there's something about that aroma in a nice old-fashioned cafeteria or cafe or even restaurant that just it, it triggers your taste bud the moment you walk in the door. I wish places like that existed still. Everything is now so commercialized. You know, nothing smells good anymore. You just walk in, get your food, and go. And I wish somebody would start a restaurant and make that a priority, that the aroma is the enticement. Well, i tell you something, that sunflower... <laughs> oven bakery when I mm-hmm. walked in that place. It was like, you know, just putting on a sweater or something. Right. It was just so comfortable. But Mike, I think you're really onto something. Um I'm just I'm just looking up uh Britling cafeterias now and they were in Memphis and Birmingham and I think the whole cafeteria thing, I think we started this with the automat that's you know, that started in the early days. What you know, cafeteria culture, that's mm-hmm. just a whole topic that can be explored. You're right on. You know, Morrison's was the height of my family's dining right. experience. Yeah, we thought that was fine dining. My mother <laughs> would shove all of six children in the car with my father, and she'd stand on the end of the driveway in her bathrobe and wave. As he'd, you know, there are all these people hanging out the car and to go to Morrison's Off on to Morrison's. Sunday. It's just huge. Yeah. Well, anyway, <clears throat> Mike, we appreciate it. That's uh, <clears throat> very intriguing and thought-provoking, and we appreciate the call. We appreciate you listening and sharing that with us. Carol will do some more exploring about restaurants, like Grandma's House, <clears throat> you like know, on Grandma's Sunday. Grandma's House. I'm wishing that I'd had a piece of Boston cream pie for five cents at and what's Britling's so, Cafe. And what's so funny about Britling's, I see that um, for the one in Memphis, Gladys Presley, just to bring it full circle, mother of Elvis Presley, used to work there. Wow! And they oh, said Java. in 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 Graceland, there's a little um, uh, display with the Brightland Cafeteria and her work there. So it was a true institution. That's a beautiful thing. It's Java. a beautiful thing, Java. Now we have a caller, Java next, who's I don't see a name. Do you know about this mystery caller? Um, I know we have two. Let's go to Leonard and Marks, and okay. we'll see who the other one is. Hey, Leonard. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How's everything I- in Marks? Well, we're we're existing. We're okay. Uh, but uh, I was calling to, you're looking for breakfast places in New Orleans, and I was going to uh, give you a tip on one. That's, it's it's co- close to the Camellia Grill. It's not far at all. It's called the Panola Cafe. The Panola Cafe? And it's Cafe? a great spot. Right. It's right in the middle of a residential section. It's just off Carrollton Avenue. Stoff and, Carroll. uh, Carrollton was, a, near, was the street name I couldn't come up with, oh, talking about that's the right. Camellia. That's when yeah. it turns, it becomes Carrollton. You're right. Like, yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. And, uh, All right, Panola, but, uh, as in it, Panola, Panola, Mississippi? County, yeah. Panola County, yeah. Just like Panola County, yeah. Just okay. like Panola County. It's spelled the same, but it's 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 uh, near Tulane, sort of behind Tulane area. <clears throat> you see students in there, but it's, uh, I say, right in the middle. I, you, that, I don't know the address. <laughs> well, uh, could look that up. we'll but look her up. Uh, right in the, you know, it's, it's houses all around it. It's, mm-hmm. There's no, uh, it's not in a commercial I think, district. Is it but Brightson's it's been there in that same neighborhood? Brightson's? Kind of in there? Yeah, I think yeah. so. River but Bend? I, hey, Brightson's but, is on the, the sort of the south. Uh, it's toward the river from uh, Camellia Grill. It's you know, actually it's, called Bright- Ricabono's Panola Street Cafe. 
They oh. have liver and onions oh, for I breakfast. Oh, I see. Somebody just sent me a text about it. Mm, the one, two, three plate, the egg sandwich. Malcolm. This is good. All right. Road trip. Road trip. We got to put this one on the and list. Open seven days a week. Oh. <laughs> yeah, not <laughs> no, closed no, no close on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a neighborhood spot, but it's it's a good one. Great tip. Many many thanks. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you picking up the phone and giving us a ring. That's so helpful. Now we got Jesse from um, Mobile, Alabama, calling. Hello, Jesse. Hey, how's it going? Man, it's good. You. Well, the sun is shining. We're not digging out snow, so I'm not complaining. Well, that's true. <laughs> not in Mobile. No. Nope. Quick question. You were in New Orleans. Were you testing any king cakes while you were there? <laughs> you know, uh, people give me grief about this. I'm not a big king cake eater. Uh, I saw the funniest thing on social media the other day that said the king cake is nothing but a donut with a party hat on or something like that. But <laughs> either way, I, I have eaten a lot of king cake. Uh, Carol, are you, are you a big fan? I'm, I'm just sort of blase, well, blase you know, on king cake. Well, we can cakes. look at both of our physiques to see that you are a non-king cake eater. No, it doesn't have anything to do I with eat that. wads of dough. <laughs> I mean, to me, a king cake is a wad of dough, but right. I, I do. With a with a nice, you know, nice little uh, decoration on top. And there, you know, there are lots of king cakes going on right now oh, in our man. in our Facebook thing, cooking and coping. Um, there was one this morning. It was a cinnamon chip and pecan king cake, and I thought, you know, I can get behind. You can get that. behind that. Oh, I just got corrected on text. A king cake is a donut in drag. A donut in drag. <laughs> Uh, and, and then another source on cooking and coping, uh, Janet Wagner said she had received a gift, an absolutely delicious king cake from <clears throat> Sullivan's in Gluckstadt. Sullivan's? So is that Sullivan's Market? I don't know. I don't know, but it, it looks... What, wait, I'm going to pass it over, Malcolm, because the got? baby's sitting on top. <laughs> oh, I love it. Is, is this from Sullivan? Oh, no, this is Janet. Yeah, Wagons. she said it's from Sullivan's. Beautiful cake. Beautiful cake. Well, it is the season for sure. And there's sure. a naked baby sitting on top of the cake. Yeah, it is the season. And so, and you, Jesse, are you a, a big king cake eater? Not particularly. My wife's from there, but she has a brand favorite now. It's Randazzo. Randazzo's. And it's more of a, if you've ever had a fresh, I'm uh, trying to have the best way to explain it. It's a cake you can pull, and it has a little stretch to it versus mm -hmm. a traditional cake feel. Right. It's like that. Okay. Is that a mobile thing, or is it made in New Orleans? No, Randazzo's in Metairie, but they ship. Oh, okay. It's in Metairie. Okay, well, I'm... I'm yeah. I'm looking it up so I well, this can is good. fill it and order one. So if you want to talk about king cakes, give us a call. You know, uh, Broad Street Bakery makes a fairly uh, mean king cake. I've seen, I've eaten two or three of them. Uh, I know Robert St. John usually makes some sort of king cake dessert in his restaurants for uh, for the Mardi Gras season, which is fast upon us. So but it is king cake season. Tis, tis. Yeah, and there was someone at the um, Mississippi Book Festival that did a whole book on, on king cakes. Oh, okay. Well, Jesse, thanks a lot. We appreciate you. That uh, has stimulated a lot of good conversation on the king cake. If others have opinions, you're welcome to join yeah, in. Yeah, it's the big book of king cakes by Matt Haynes. Matt Haynes. The Matt big Haynes, book. The big book of king, king cakes. He was on. Is that a, published by University Press? No, no? It, it, it's but it, it was on. Uh, he was on a panel at. Oh. You can see how festival. big the big book of king cakes huge. is. Yes, huge. It's huge. All right, we're going back down to the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We've got John calling in from Gulfport. What's going on, John? Oh, good morning. It's uh, Hensboro, which is a district of Gulfport. Ah, yes. I'm, a persimmon, I'm a persimmon grower, and I want to tell you about the, the recipe to get oh, if you want boy. to do the persimmon thing, which we is it's called persimmon buttermilk pudding. Whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. We've been, we've been waiting for this. We are big persimmon aficionados here on Deep South Dining, so yeah. please lay it upon us. Well, it's in the joy of cooking. The big 
big big Bible that uh, I have a copy of it uh, by the Bombao family. Yes. Uh, and it's I don't want to go into detail, but because I'm kind of busy at the moment, out in the back pruning my pruning my citrus. I got uh, I saved my my citrus uh, grove. I got about fifty something citrus trees. I grow down here, and I saved uh, probably ninety eight percent of the fruit. Good for you. Good for you. So, uh, so where anyway, can we find your produce? Where can we find your citrus? Do you sell it commercially? I, 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 no, I don't. I just give it away to my church and uh, food pantries down here on the coast. I give it away. So right. I have about 300 pounds of fruit. You're I'm a good man. It away. Anyway, take, take, take care and uh, pick up on that. Okay. It's now, very good. Carol. Okay, I'm on it. We're on, on we got to get Sherry Lucas on yeah, this. We'll get you know, her she's to our this for persimmon us. provider. Yes. Yes. Our purveyor. Okay. We'll report in. Okay, bye. Thanks, John. Okay, bye, John. Hansborough, not Gulfport. Hansborough. All right, we got Steve calling in from Goche. Goche, look. Yeah, hey, yeah. Steve. Hey, good morning. How you guys doing? Good. We're in a coastal sort of frame of yeah, mind. Yeah, we're this in a morning. coastal What's mood. happening? Oh, yeah, come on down here. Uh, I came out of the program late. Did y'all mention Paul's King Cakes out of Picayune? We did not, but we should have. We should have jumped right on that. So we'll let you do that. Okay, yeah. I've tried a big, big King Cake eater, but, uh, well, I like them, but I, don't, uh, I, need, I eat too much. But anyway, Mobile and New Orleans tried all kind of commercial cakes, and Paul's King Cakes more than just dough. Tried the Mississippi mud one. Yeah, I tried them all, mm. blueberry, all of them. And a whole lot more than dough there, I guarantee you that. And you they're get the count up, eat, eat you some. <laughs> they in are they in Picayune or Poplarville or somewhere down there? Oh man, I, where are you from, young man? You Wiggins. I'm from there. I'm from Perkingston. You ain't been there long, then. Yeah, you ain't no, they're not Boston they're days. not claiming him, are they, Steve? <laughs> but Paul ships but all over. Yeah, everywhere. but I'm asking where they're located. Picayune. 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 So there you have it. All right. Thank you. They ship from all over the place. Well, you know, we'll try the Mississippi yeah, mud. Yeah, let me really repeat myself. Okay. All the Thank You cake is the best from Mississippi and Mobile, in my opinion, and a lot of other people would get a commercial cake. And the kind of dick things, you don't know about Paul's uh, King Cake Thank You, you don't know Mississippi. And it's a whole lot more than those there. I guarantee you that. Okay, that's all that's need to say. Thank and you, thank sir. You guys, I appreciate your program. All right. Thank hey, you for setting the record straight. Right. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Paul's many times. I just couldn't remember where it was. But uh, now Steve has set us straight on that. So thank you so much. Paul's is a legend. It's an icon. Uh, it is well known from coast to coast for king caking king cake making all right we got jane calling also from gulfport a lot going on in gulfport today good morning jane how are you happy new year good morning happy new year i'm a native new orleanian and i can tell you that randazzo's is the bomb <laughs> randazzo's king cake is wonderful and a wonderful breakfast place in new orleans is the ruby slipper oh, there's also yeah. another one in metairie very good Ruby Slipper, yes, I'm familiar with the Ruby Slipper. I, it didn't occur to me when I was down well, there. Well, we are gaining info. Oh, yeah, today. that's what we do. We're, that's what we, we do. We gain, we share, <laughs> we rejoice. And uh, Ren, yes. Randazzo's also ships. So we, we've offered oh, many yeah. king cake options. Yeah. We yes. did. Well, Jane, that's great. And we appreciate you uh, tuning in All and, and giving us appreciate a call. What else is going on in your world? Can't oh. say. I'm so happy that we are here in the South, and we haven't had all these hurricanes, and I feel so bad for up north. They're getting all the bad weather now. Yeah, out in California as well. They're getting floods. Really, yes. really tough weather cycle out there. It's. Uh... I know, and we know what it's all about down here, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, thanks so, so much for... Uh, my, for... Prayers are, my prayers go out to them because... They are suffering with the snow and the flooding. Yeah, it's those uh, bomb cyclones, which we never even heard of until a few years ago, and they're sweeping across the nation uh, during this peculiar time. We've got more callers, 
and we've got more information. If you want to talk about king cakes, which, Carol, I don't know. We didn't even know we were going to talk about king cakes this morning. We thought we were going to talk about trends, and obviously we just hit on a trend. We're on a trend. Uh, That's how it happens. King cakes are trending big on Deep South Dining. And it's also the Mississippi dining. Gulf Coast is trending because we have I think, Brent from Gulfport. I think our next. tower is strong in the Gulfport uh, Golden Gulf area. We appreciate all of you down there, and, well, we appreciate everybody who listens to Deep South Dining. Hey, Carol, one of the trends, we're going to go back to the phones because we've got a few more callers. But one of the trends in food are these chicken sandwiches. And it's the big thing. They have swept the nation. Chicken sandwiches, fried yes, and indeed. otherwise. But we'll talk about that. But first, let's go back to Gulfport, where we've spent a good bit of our morning in Gulfport. And, well, in environs. Environs, that's right. But the name just disappeared from the board, so. Good morning, Gulfport. What's going on? Hey, good morning. This is Brent in Gulfport. I'll call because I wanted to make sure y'all got a call from Gulfport today. Thank you, Brent. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a roll today in Gulfport. We're big yeah. in Gulfport. Yeah, thank you, Malcolm. Uh, we've met before, but I, uh, I've heard the subject being the king cake, and um, I do not know the name of this king cake, but I'm telling you, it's the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. And y'all may know the story. Um, and can can get the information out. It, it, I believe that it is sold at a pharmacy in Waveland, but it's made in New Orleans. Oh. I, I, I swear I heard that it was an Asian pharmacy, and it is so unbelievable. And the saying that uh, that I heard about how they got to be able to sell it was that they they get a certain number every day, they sell out. And they have to wait until the next day. And someone in the media contacted uh, the, the bakery that sells it to the pharmacy, and said they asked, "How is it that you ended up only selling it in one pharmacy, uh, one place, and it's a pharmacy in Waveland?" And the answer was, "A hundred people called one time, but one person called." A hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> what a great, that's a great story. I, yeah, I love that. Okay, so, but I'm Carol, looking, Carol's I'm, on it. A friend of mine's office, and everybody was like, oh my God, this is the best thing that's ever been. And, and I do not know uh, the name of the pharmacy. Well, here we go. First of all, thank you so much. This is just the kind of thing that Malcolm and I live for. But it's the Dong Fong bake shop which is a vietnamese bake shop and the Mm -hmm. waveland pharmacy Mm. in waveland mississippi is the only authorized reseller of dong fong bake shop is dong fong in the world indeed it is indeed it is but uh, you heard it uh first though yeah uh, we we needed a little help from gulfport to get there but uh, uh, th- this is pretty. You know, we need to look into this story. Yes, we do, Malcolm. Yes, we do. I mean, I, th- I think it's a rightful thing for a pharmacy to. Carry in Waveland, there's. I mean, you know, poor Waveland just got so wiped out by Katrina. Right. The little town only yeah. has four or five stores, and what was the the main drag there? Unless it's out on right. Highway 90. I don't really know where this pharmacy is, and I should because I've spent so much time down there. But we're going to get on it. Uh, and yeah. and also, uh, I think we really need to dig a little deeper into uh, Dong Fong because you know I'm doing this fast. I'm on the fly here. Oh, okay. But it, uh, Dong Fong was founded in 1982. It is in East mm-hmm. New Orleans, and it is a James Beard Award winning bakery. There you go. So, wow, Brent, what, you what have really fun? you've really brought us Thank a you. just wealth of things to ponder and work on today oh my goodness we run out of time what happened where'd the show go carol brent call back thank you thanks to all of our listeners all of our callers we even have people waiting to what are we going to do deep south dining is a production of mississippi public broadcasting's think radio and we are funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you and we thank you our show is produced by java chapman And for Carol Palmer, my co-host, I am Malcolm White. We ask that you now stay tuned for Marshall Ramsey's show, Southern Remedy Follows at 11. And we ask that you join us each Monday for more Deep South Dining, heard exclusively on MPB Think Radio. 
This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your